Hey, welcome back to Ninja Brop. Today I'm still going over very old footage. It's from January 2022. It's my crash that resulted in fracturing my wrist and put me out for mm, probably a good month or so uh, at the time. It was when I first started racing at Chuckwalla Raceway in Southern California and I really didn't know this track at all and it's actually kind of a complicated track to race it takes a lot of skill and it's very high speed for what it is I'm used to button willow and cart tracks which are more point and shoot sort of tracks and this was quite the departure for me it was mostly just holding the throttle open constantly and trying to maintain as much traction in colder temps as well and well that had happened uh, when I started racing originally which was at Portland International Raceway up in Oregon this track is a bit different in any case here's past me talking all about this crash take it away past me today I'm gonna be going over a injury that I received at my last race day about six weeks ago as of uh, recording this uh, I'm mostly healed, I'm still in a brace as you can see, but my wrist was fractured. I got an x-ray and everything, and I was in a splint for the last oh, four and a half, five weeks, and I've been in this brace since then. Uh, it was about uh, six weeks ago on the first race day, I went out on Friday, did the track day uh, out at Chuckwalla uh, in the direction that I had never gone before, so I was super slow. Uh, and then I went to race the next day, my first race out, and, uh, well, I went out to race, and, uh, I got hit by another racer, which is, which is not fun. I never want that to happen again. Yeah. And here's the footage. It's not something that I thought that would ever happen to me, to be honest, that I would ever get hit by or taken out by another racer. Um, I was just, you know, as soon as people started going by me, I just stuck to the race line, stayed predictable, and uh, afterwards my friend and I uh, went over each frame. Basically, uh, we went frame by frame, it looks like the racer uh, was doing just fine, was set up to pass me. In the turn, you know, just fine, you know, is in coming into a turn. Uh, and then she target fixated and stood the bike up and just rammed right into me instead of committing to the turn. Uh, from what I understand, this might not have even been the first time that she's done something like this. So that was not very, that's not very encouraging to hear, honestly. <laughs> anyway, so as soon as she hit me, I... Basically, I didn't even know what was going on. Like, it completely disoriented me. It's one of the most terrifying things I think I've ever experienced. Uh, basically, uh, I hit, got hit, you know, and I, I didn't even know what was going on. Uh, I was like, what's going on, you know? I, I fell off the bike. Uh, you can actually see here. I'm still in my riding position like this, basically. Uh, the bike runs my wrist over, proceed to tumble the most I've ever, you know, I've, I've never really rolled uh, nearly as much uh, on the few times I've been down because it's usually been low sides and it's usually just been uh, pretty slow, honestly. But this was a really high speed crash and I literally had no way of preventing it. It was absolutely terrifying. Uh, so I am you know, started tumbling. I was trying to pull my hands in, you know, because that's my natural instinct is to ball up. 
keep it as nice and tight, but the, the speed at which I was rolling, centrifugal force, kept throwing my arms out, basically, and it wasn't until a good number of rotations that I was able to pull in my arms. Once I did come to a stop, because my helmet had been completely obliterated, uh, the shield was ripped off, I, everything that, almost everything that can come off of my helmet did. As you can see here, so there's usually this big plastic piece that sits right on the back here. So that's completely gone, scraped off. The shield is completely gone, as you can see. Uh, and then on this side right here, here's uh, one of the plates that actually holds the shield in place and covers the mechanism that lets you remove the shield. You can see it kind of, you can see it kind of on this side here. Oh, if I can get it off. Man. There we go. See? So this is an Icon Air Flight. And it did a great job, actually, of protecting my head in a high-speed crash where I was rolling. And uh, a lot of people actually give me shit for this helmet, believe it or not. It's just because of the way it looks. Well, I mean, the face shield is designed so that it comes all the way down to here. Uh, and a lot of people don't like that. And uh, I think it looks kooky. I kind of like the look of it. That's why I had one. I rode with it on the street for a long time, uh, for about three years. And then I, I had to actually start using it on the track because I high-sighted the Ninja 400 out at the cart tracks in my uh, track helmet. And I, I don't ride with it on the track any longer as a result. You know, I'm tumbling, come to a, f a stop. There's so much dirt in my eyes that uh, I can't even see. And I'm just like in pain because of my wrist. And uh, also my hip had got compacted. So basically uh, I couldn't even stand up and walk. Uh, and I'm just like, why, why did you crash into me? Why? Uh, anyway, so that was that was pretty terrifying, honestly. But uh, out of it, I got this pretty cool. I threw a skull in the icon uh, helmet, so now I'm gonna hang that on my wall, kind of a trophy of everything that's happened. Uh, I was in a splint for about four and a half, five weeks, and uh, now I'm in a wrist. What is this called? Brace, wrist brace, basically. I'm gonna fix up the R3. It's sat for six weeks. Come up on this side. We gotta take the tech stickers if they go down. I go back down the edge of the end. Just have a bike in the back. Alright, right, thank you guys. Hopefully he's alright. Yeah, he's uh, he's good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna pass tech.